greetings to you all my friends all over the globe that are watching me today this is indeed a wonderful day a great day a joyful day a peaceful day I welcome you all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to Resurrection Life Ministries International in part in the life of God all over the globe by the Holy Spirit you're welcome this is your your channel for good news this is the place where you enjoy abundance of life this is a place where you'll be successful prosperous where the Holy Spirit teaches you uh, the, the riches in Christ teaches you how to be glorious how to be successful how to be how to be joyful how to walk in peace how to be wise how to be prosperous in your business in everything that you do how to have peace in your marriage, in your family. This is the place for that because the Holy Spirit is here to teach about the mysteries of Christ in you, the hope of glory. It's here to reveal the life that we have in Christ Jesus. So buckle your seat belt. We're going to get into another journey with the Spirit of God into what we started last time. Last time we spoke about the offspring of Christ or the generation of Christ you understand the children of Christ we, we spoke about it and then a brother many verses and we went through and we, 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 we saw that Jesus Christ was born of God and then after we also went to Genesis in the beginning we saw that Adam was also born of God all right so anyways before I, I, I go into it further let us just share a quick word of prayer and thanksgiving to our Father to prepare your heart to receive the word that God has for you. No, no matter what religion you, you belong to just stay tuned God has something wonderful for you even if you're atheist open your heart and mind and listen to what, what is coming forth and the spirit of truth will confirm and convict your heart. Of, uh, of, of, of the truth that is coming forth. Uh, dear Father, I thank you for this, this opportunity and privilege to minister the good news of your kingdom to, to, to souls all over the globe. I thank you, Daddy, for, for giving me the understanding. Thank you, Daddy, for giving me the wisdom to communicate this truth, this gospel to every soul that is listening that they might understand. Thank you, Father, that your Holy Spirit is imparting life unto them, is releasing joy, love, understanding, wisdom, prosperity, is releasing kindness, righteousness, teaching them how to walk into it, even as they're hearing the word of truth, even as they're hearing the words of life. Thank you, Daddy. It is done, Holy Spirit. I thank you. Thank you for what you're doing. I thank you for the angels that have been released, that have gone forth, that are in the homes of people. Yes, they are there in your homes. I can see them. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. It is done. I love you, precious Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for making me what I am today by your grace. I love you and I worship you. Thank you, Jesus, for giving your life and loving us all. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Lord. So as we studied last time that Adam the first man God made was called Adam and this man the Bible says God made that man in his own image according to his likeness and he formed the body of man from the dust of the ground and after forming that body he then breathe into his nostrils the breath of life or the spirit of life he then put his life into that body he then took his life and placed that life in that body are you getting the image it was a life of God and God took that life he placed that life in the body and now that life was now outside of God that, that life now has its own personality. That life now can make choices. 
But life now can, can choose to disobey God or obey God. Thus life can now, this person, right, that is called Adam, has a soul. Bible says he became a living soul. So God places life in Adam and it says he became a living soul. So now he, he can make choices, he can decide. You understand? So now that life had to now flow through the soul through the body to come in a physical world. So now the soul had to now make a conscious decision whether it will allow the life inside of him to flow out. Whether it would allow the peace to flow, the joy to flow. Whether it would allow the wisdom to flow. Whether it would allow the, the, the kindness, the self-control of God to flow out. Or is going to do its own thing. Do you understand? It can choose to allow the fullness of God's life to flow. Or block it just by making a decision. Just by deciding, I do not want to walk in peace. I don't want to walk in joy. I don't want to obey God. I want to do this. I want to eat this fruit. I want to do that. Do you get it? For this man, God made him perfect. But yet God gave him his own choice, his own will. The life of God came out in the life of God. God gave it a soul, placed it in a body, and was given a name. Adam. So that is man. <laughs> so man, actually, from the garden was the life of God given a soul, placed in a body. That was man. Hallelujah. Praise God forevermore. So God had given Adam a responsibility, a task, a work to accomplish or to do, fulfill on this earth. He told Adam when you read carefully in Genesis chapter 1 verses, let us go there, Genesis chapter 1 verses, I believe 28, Genesis, Genesis the book of the beginnings, when we see the pattern, how God made things in the beginning, we will further understand many things that have been veiled. So verses 28 and it said God blessed them that was a blessing and God said unto them be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth so now God said he blessed them and said be fruitful first multiply replenish the earth fill the earth Subdue the earth, meaning bring it, that word subdue means to bring it under bondage, bring it into bondage, bring force, forcefully. That word subdue mean, mean to force, to keep it under, to bring it into bondage, or to bring it into one's control. To subdue it, subdue the earth, and have dominion, rule, 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 rule. Is they have dominion over the fish of the sea. In other words, dominate, tread down, rule, rule over all the beasts, all the animals. So Adam was not a victim of any bad circumstances. He was not a slave of anything. Nothing had dominion over Adam. No animal, nobody had dominion over Adam except God. But even God gave him his own will. So Adam was supposed to reign and to rule. It was supposed to reign and to rule over everything that God made. Hallelujah. That was the task of Adam. That was the responsibility of Adam. To reign and to rule. To reign and to rule. To subjugate. So nothing was supposed to dominate Adam. Nothing. Nothing was supposed to uh, be rule over Adam. Adam was not supposed to be the slave of anything. I mean God made him the king of, over all the earth. He was a king of all the earth. So he was not a slave of anything. He was not a slave of nothing on this earth. I mean, he had authority over the whole earth. <laughs> Hallelujah. Not a slave of any bad circumstances. Not a slave of any fear, diseases. Not a slave of doubt. Not a slave of any animal. No fear whatsoever. He was a king. God... Uh, made him a king and gave him a responsibility, gave him a dominion. God told him how far his dominion extends. 
Hallelujah. How far he should rule. And over what? He ought to rule. Thank you, precious Lord. So as we can see here, Adam was to multiply himself, but he could not do it alone. God had to give him a woman to do it, whose name was Eve. Eve, the mother of all creation. Eve. So, Adam and his wife disobeyed God. It's very interesting, the Bible never says, when you read Romans, it says, the man disobeyed God. It didn't say the woman did, because God sees the man and the woman to be one. So anyways, the man disobeyed God, and when he disobeyed God, God had told him the day. You see, God put life in him. God placed his life and gave it a soul place in the body. God said, the day you eat of it, you die. So it's God's own life, but at the same time, God is communicating with our life. <laughs> oh, thank you, Lord. And that life has its own choice, will, and all that. Anyways, so God say, the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. So death is the absence of the life of God. So in other words, God was saying, the day you eat of it, you will be cut off from walking in peace, from walking in joy, from walking in wisdom, my wisdom, prosperity, from walking in my rest, from walking in everything that I made you to be. You'll be cut off from that. You get it? Alright. So, when he ate of it, the word of God was fulfilled. It does not matter. God spoke. His word must come to pass. Adam was respon responsible of, of his actions. God didn't say, Oh, I'm so sorry. I placed that tree in the middle of a garden. It's my fault. No. It was Adam's responsibility not to do it. Okay? So, then... Because God told Adam to multiply, after he ate that tree, of, uh, he ate that fruit, what happened is that now Adam's spirit was death instead of being life. So now, you could see that in the garden, the moment Adam ate that fruit, the Bible makes us understand that they went to hide themselves from God. They saw they were naked, they went to hide themselves from God. So that was fear to begin with. Fear. They now inherited fear inside of them, which they didn't have. Not only because they ran away from God. That was fear. Not only that, but shame. Was start, they were starting to feel shameful. You understand? So now, that death, that became part of them. It was producing fear. It was producing shame. You get it? It was producing a, a separation from God. You get it? Now they wanted to be away from God. They wanted to be away from God. Why? Because they were trying to hide themselves from God. They were embarrassed. They were ashamed. They didn't want, to, they didn't want God to see their nakedness. And they were afraid because they heard God coming. They were afraid. But that was not the will of, of God for man. So, after Adam had to multiply himself, so definitely he will multiply according to his own likeness. He will produce the image that is within him. Now remember, that image that God had placed, that image now had become a sinful image, a corrupt image, a death image dead image you get it so that man that was living in that body was now had become ugly had become sinful it was death instead of life it was death inside of him you understand so that is what the Bible says sin entered into the world by one man's uh, disobedience or one man's offense so from then, that is when sickness started to come. Diseases, all the, all the names of diseases that you know, they started to come. All the negativism, they started to come. Fear, anxiety, anger, worry, low self-esteem, lack of confidence, poverty, AIDS, cancer, headache, uh, no matter what it is, it started to come. 
You get it? Now his spirit is death. So now death is flowing from within him. And now every child that he will give birth to, they'll be little rascals. They will be sinful children born with death and no life. Born without the knowledge they, 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 they were born in darkness. Meaning that they don't know God. They did not have the life of God in them. They could not get close to God except by animal sacrifice. Obviously it was not a blood of animal that made them get close to God. But it was because by doing that, it showed their faith and the sacrifice God will offer her, uh, in the future, which is our Lord Jesus Christ and Savior. Glory be to Him forevermore. So, when Adam gave birth, you could see what took place in the nature. And the spirit, Adam enjoyed God. But as children were born in sin, Adam knew what it meant to live a perfect life. He knew what it meant to live a blissful life. But then after when he fell, the Bible said, All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Romans 3, 23. All for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. All. Meaning that everybody that was born of man had sinned. Let us look, uh, go to our Romans chapter 5 verses 12 Romans chapter 5 verses 12 it says wherefore as by one man sin entered into the world and death by sin and so sin and so death passed upon all men for all have sinned for all have sinned the death passed upon all men for all have sinned so which means everybody that was born because of Adam's sin and remember God only made one man, took the woman out of the rib of Adam. It was their responsibility to multiply themselves, to reproduce. So God was no longer going to make any other man. So now every man that will be born on the surface of this earth will come through Adam. And every man that was born came through Adam. So this means that everybody that was born was born in sin. That person was born a sinner. He was a sinner by birth. Though he did not commit the same sin Adam, Adam uh, committed, right? But he was born in sin. He was born with a, a sin nature. Why? Because Adam gave birth to him. So now he is a sinner, which he never, he never committed the same sin Adam committed, but he's still called a sinner. Why? Not because he did anything wrong. Because his father, Adam, was a sinner and gave birth after his own kind. Do you get it? An apple fruit, okay, is an apple fruit. Why? Because the seed that was sown was an apple tree, apple seed. And the tree bore apple fruit. So the fruit is not responsible of how it came from. What is responsible was a tree. You get it? The seed and the tree. But a fruit is not responsible how it comes out. It's not responsible of its, uh, its appearance. It's not responsible of, uh, of how big it is, how small it is, of its shape. So the same way all the children that will be born from Adam, they could either be born with a big head, a small head, a big nose, a small nose. They could be born blind. They could be born deaf. They could be born mute. They could be born with one hand shorter than, the, shorter than the other, one hand longer than the other. They can be born with only four fingers. They can be born with no hair. They can be born with defects on the body, physical defects. Why? Because of what Adam did. What he did, that was a consequence. Do you get it? So that's what happened. So automatically death passed upon all men. That is why a little child is so, can be so evil. A little child being breastfed and can just buy the mother's breast. You wonder what's wrong with such a, a child. A little child that can be so disobedient. You tell them to do something they don't want to listen. They cry in order for, in order for you to give them what they want. They torture you. You don't want to listen to anything. 
You know, it's oh, he's cute, it's cute, it's cute. That little cute friend. You don't discipline them. You don't teach them the word of God. You don't bring them up in the fear of the Lord. They'll grow up to be monsters. Because Hitler was also a cute child. The parents never thought he would be a monster. Right? Because every child is born with that sinful nature. That death has passed onto them directly. Without them having any control over it. The child has no control over how his head is going to be. How big that his head is going to be. So that's why you should not make fun of people who have big heads and small heads and all that. It's because of the fallen state. Alright, because of the sin of Adam. So now every human being had to come through that channel. And, and, and Peter said something very interesting. Let's go to the book of First Peter 1.23. 1 Peter 1 23 it said being born again not of corruptible seed but of incorruptible by the word of God which liveth and abideth forever which liveth and abideth forever oh glory so being born again not of corruptible seed but of incorruptible seed by the word of God which liveth and abideth forever. The seed of the semen of a man is perishable, is corruptible. Meaning that it's decaying. It leads to death. It's corruptible. It leads to death. It's full of fear. It's full of sicknesses and diseases. So it said that every man that is born on this earth the seed of Adam was corruptible and so the seed of Adam's children were corruptible and the seed of Adam's children, 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 children were corruptible you get it so now man was born originally in sin now man has no hope he was born separated from God he was born an enemy of God does not want to go close to God because his nature is different from the nature of God he has no life in him it's death inside of him his desires are not the desires of God his thoughts are not the thoughts of God. His will is not the will. He wants to do otherwise. That is why you could see the men in the Old Testament. Though the laws were given. You must understand. The law cannot. A law. A law that is given to you that says do not sin. Does not remove that sinful nature or character inside of you. The law is simply tell don't do it. Why? Because there is something in you that wants to do it. And the law says don't do it. So the law is restricting you from doing it, but the law does not change you. So that is why all the men of God or women of God, God use in time past. You can read from the Bible. Though the Bible calls them righteous men, not because of their nature, but because of their faith in God. God accredited righteousness unto them. These men, they did some, some things that are not godly. Look at David, what he did. Look at Noah getting drunk afterwards you, you see it so these men <laughs> oh glory anyways so every human seed everything that proceeds out of the body's age is corruptible so now man has no hope to get close to God man cannot change his nature because that is what he's born with it cannot change who he is. He was born like that. You see, it does not matter whether you're born of a queen. It doesn't matter whether you're born of a, of a prince. Whether you're born of Obama. It doesn't matter whether you're born of a president. Whether you're born of a prime minister. It doesn't matter whether you're born of, a, of a, the most wealthiest person on this earth. It doesn't matter. Even if you're born of Bill Gates. Or Steve Jobs, it does not matter who gave birth to you. Because even if you're born of Beyonce, many people want to see the child of Beyonce. She's so cute. Oh, the child is so cute. It doesn't matter who gave birth to you. It's saying that every seed of man is corruptible. It's sent as a sinful seed and it's full of death. It's full of wickedness. It's full of evil. And that seed can grow up to become a murderer can grow up to become a thief why because by nature they were born thieves by nature they were born murderers by nature they were born idol worshippers that is why a man can bow down to an animal and worship 
that animal and say it's God. Can bow down to an image or objects and worship these objects. Worship another human being and call them gods. Why? Right? Because they were born idol worshippers. That is why a male can have sexual uh, relationship with another male. A female can have another uh, can, can, can have sexual relationship with another female. Why? Because they were born with that death nature, contrary to the nature of God, that evil, sickening, and sinful nature, which was far away from God, being the enemies of God. Paul described it in the book of Romans, chapter three. Say they're enemies of God. They, they have a poison of asps on their on their on their tongue. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Their feet are swift to, it said none of them sees God and none of them fear God. There is no fear of God in their sight. He meant every human being that, was, that came forth from Adam. So now, this human being cannot be changed no matter how hard he tries. He can change, he can try to change outwardly, force himself by his will, the will of a soul, try to restrict that death in the spirit. But in the ways, it's his nature. It will grow up as he's grown old. You hear, 60 years old man raping a little child. 50 years old man committing suicide, killing the wife. Because of that death nature. That death, that was, a, that was at work in man. It was not life. That is why you hear many people, life is hard, life is difficult. <laughs> it's not life they're living. They have death inside of them. That is at work in them. That's why they talk that way. So now this man, how can he get close to God? How can he draw close to God? How can his nature be changed? How can he become a different person? How can he go to heaven? How can he have joy consistently? How can he have peace consistently? How can he always be successful in everything that he does? How can he not fail or have a failure mentality? How can he not worry? How can he not fear inside of himself? How can he not be, have low self-esteem? How can he not feel rejected by many people? How can he escape from these kind of things? How is it possible for that man? How is it possible? Definitely, it would never be possible by that man. It's not possible. But God gives us a solution, gave us a solution gave us a solution in his word let us go very quick to the book of John I like the good news hope you're being blessed John chapter 3 verses 3 it says Jesus answered and said unto him he was talking to Nicodemus verily verily I say unto thee except a man be born again he cannot see the kingdom of God Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he's old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Marvel not that I say unto thee, He must be born again. The wind bloweth where, where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh and whither it goeth. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. He does it. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Hallelujah. So Jesus said, Human being is born of flesh. They are just flesh. They are just flesh. Not spiritual beings in the sight of God. They are just flesh. Full of sin, full of death, full of evil and wickedness. That is why you don't get persuaded by any man's religion. Religion is not what changes man. Religion is just a cover up. Trying to cover up that wickedness inside of him. Try to cover up that evil inside of him. By praying five times a day, four times a day. By dressing nice, by putting on suits, covering their hairs. By not wearing jew jewelries and all that. They're trying to cover up that wickedness, that death nature. But that which is born of the flesh is flesh. Jesus is saying, that man, the only hope that person has is not religion. It's not rules and regulations. It's not washing their hands and their hairs and all that. No. 
The only hope that man has is to be born again. That is the only hope. He has to be born again. That is the only hope. He cannot change who he is. He was born like that. He was born, he could not even choose his parents. He was born that way. Hallelujah. So every human being comes from Adam. So their father is Adam. But then we can trace it to the devil as well. Their father is Adam and the devil. You must listen. Not everybody is a child of God. Stop saying everybody is a child of God. No, Jesus said it. Not everybody is a child of God. So, this human being, as I said, he must be born again. In other words, he has to be born again now with a new nature. Born again now with life instead of death. But how can such a man be born again? How can he be born again? How can he be born again? Jesus explained it to us in the same book of John chapter 3. Jesus did not finish talking. Verse 16. Let's read verses 13 going. And it says, John chapter 3 verse 13 says, And no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man which is in heaven. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so the Son of Man must be lifted up. Though whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world, that he gave us only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Glory to God. You can read the rest on your own. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So the Lord Jesus Christ said that now God wills to bring every man to himself. God wills to bring every man into his kingdom to enjoy the, the blessings of his kingdom. It is the will, perfect will of God. But it said before this man can come to, he must first be born again. And how can this man be born again when he's already old? When he's already grown, how can he get back into his mother's womb? And Jesus said, no, he must be born again of the spirit. Why? Because his true nature is a spirit. So it's that death that must be removed from inside of him and receive life. But how will that death be removed? You understand? How will that sin nature be removed? Let us go to the book of 2 Corinthians. We'll wrap it up very fast. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verses 17 is it therefore no verses 2nd Corinthians chapter 5 let us read verses 21 actually 21 it said, for he have made him to be sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus so now the Bible makes you understand that through one man's sin, through one man's obed uh, disobedience, sin entered into the world. And through one man's disobedience, right? Through one man's disobedience, sorry, sin entered into the world as meaning that sin entered into the world. The sun now lost in brightness. If you read the book of Job, it says that the sun is, does not even shine as it ought to shine. The sun doesn't shine as it ought to shine. Neither the stars, they became darker. The clouds became darker. You get it? Everything became filled with sin. The trees and everything. The animals, sin entered into the world. Everything started to decay. That's why everything has an expiry date. Because everything is perishable, corruptible. Hallelujah. So now, sin entered into the world by one man's disobedience. As we saw it in the book of Romans chapter 5 verses 12. Sin entered into the world by one man's disobedience. Right? So now, sin has to be taken out of the world by another man's obedience. So the sin that entered into the world, meaning that everything that entered into the world by Adam, the Bible says, 
by one man's obedience right many will be he said many were made sinners or sinful by one man's disobedience and many also will be made righteous by one man's obedience so through Adam many evil things wicked things entered into this world and through Jesus Christ these things he took all the things that entered into the world by Adam and it became that thing hallelujah that's what I say he made him to be sin for us meaning that the sin that entered into the world by Adam's disobedience Jesus became the embodiment of that so the fear the sin the wickedness and all that it was placed upon Jesus upon his body his perfect body it was placed upon him and first of all we must understand that because every man was born in sin God wanted to save humanity but he cannot save them through another man it had to be another man that could rescue man but it was not going to be a savior that is born of that is born of man that is born of the seed of man now it has to be somebody that God himself gives birth to hallelujah so now when you read the book of first John let's go there very fast first John first John thank you precious Holy Spirit first John first John chapter 1 verses 1 it said that which was from the beginning which we have heard which we have seen with our eyes which we have looked upon our hands have handled of the word of life this is John speaking about his experience he had with the Lord Jesus Christ that verse 2 says for the life was manifested was made visible and we have seen and bear witness and shew unto you that eternal life which was with the Father and was manifested unto us so John said okay because Jesus Christ you must understand that as I said he was born of God so now the Father took his spirit took his life and placed it in the womb of a woman and now God shaped a body for that life that he placed in the womb and gave that life a soul it said that life was for the father from the beginning and it said the word was with God and the word was God and it said this word of life this life was with the father and this life has been made visible unto us so this life that Adam had nobody else had a taste of it only Adam but then after fell short of the glory of God because of sin now this life was made manifest now God put his life in the womb of the woman Mary let's go to the book of John John chapter 5 John chapter 5 thank you Lord thank you Lord John chapter 5 verses verses 26 it said for as the father has life in himself so has he given to the son to have life in himself as the father has life in himself so has he given to the son to have life in himself so now okay the father took us life why because now the father has to save humanity through the womb of a woman it said the seed of the woman which we know the woman does not have a seed but it was God that will place a seed in the woman without the participation of the man why because the seed of that man is sinful so now God places his own seed his own life into the woman but that life that he placed in the woman he prepared a body in the womb of the woman where he will place that life and he gave that life a soul meaning that Jesus the Son of God had his own will. That is why he prays that Father take this cup away from him. He said, nevertheless, not my will. Not my will. So this life had his own will. Though the life came from God and it was one with God. He said, nevertheless, not my will, but let your will be done. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. He said, not my will, but your will be done. I want us to see something here. 
in the book of Hebrews. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hebrews chapter 9, I believe. Chapter, it's actually chapter 10, verses 5. And it reads, Hebrews chapter 10, verses 5. It says, I read from verses 3, But in both sacrifices there is a remembrance again made of sins every year. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. Wherefore then he cometh into the world, he saith, Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, but a body thou hast prepared for me. A body thou hast prepared for me. And then after say verse 6, in burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin thou was thou had no pleasure. Then I said I lo, I come in the volume of the book it is written of me to do thy will, O God. Thank you, Lord. So this was the Lord Jesus Christ. It was prophesied of him in the Old Testament. It was prophesied of him before. It say it was prophesied of him saying that he will come and do the will of God. And God prophesied that sacrifices and offering he did not desire. That's not what God takes the light in. That is, all, that is not what takes away sin. But then when Jesus Christ, he said, a body you are prepared for me. This means that God prepared a body. Because the Bible says that by the offering of his body will be made perfect once and for all. So, God prepared a body for him. God prepared that body. God prepared how that body would look like. He designed the eyes because it was not a seed of a woman. It was a body God made. And by the, by, the, by the Holy Spirit, God allowed me to see how Jesus looked like when he was on this earth. And he was a very handsome man. And the Father told me he prepared that body for him. Very handsome man physically. Very, very handsome. He was not an ugly guy at all. On the cross, his body was married, but he was a handsome man. Glory. Anyways, so... The father placed the life. The father placed it in the womb of Mary. In the body that he had prepared. And then he gave the life a will. Hallelujah. So now this life had to grow. And eventually this life came forth as a baby. And this life had to grow. It had to grow. In the ways of the Lord. Which God taught this life by his spirit. By the Holy Spirit. So I called God Father. Why? Because it was the life of God that was manifested. The Lord Jesus Christ is the manifestation of God's life. Hallelujah. The light that was with the Father from the beginning. John said it has now been made manifested in the person of Jesus. The Bible makes us understand that his body was like that of the sinful flesh, but his body was not a sinful body. Why? Because God prepared that body. That body had to be perfect. Hallelujah. So then, Jesus Christ, after doing ministry for three years, now he had to lay down his life for humanity. He had to die and rescue human beings from that sin nature. Rescue us. Die for us. Why did he have to die? Why? Because he had to put to death sin. He had to put sin to death. When his body was on the cross, everything that was made, that was sin, now was imputed upon his body, was placed upon his body. Why? Because the Bible says he was made to be sin for us. And now was confirmed in Hebrews that it was his body that was prepared to become the sacrifice. So now everything, all that was sin, all that wickedness was placed upon his body, was made to be sin. He became the definition of sin, the expression of sin, the consequence of sin. The nature of sin. He became that on the, it was made to be sent on the cross. So now it was put to death. So now it was a seed. Everything sin was in Christ Jesus. It was a seed. The whole world was in Christ. It was a seed. Everybody born of man was in Christ. And now was put to death. And now because everything now was put to death and done away with. Now was a seed. God has now put sin away in the body of Christ. And when it was su su successfully made sin, that was when he gave up the ghost. Hallelujah. It was buried. The body was buried. 
and when the Lord quickened his spirit back to life that body was now a new body meaning that sin has been dealt with sin has been put away evil has been put away in the body of Christ why because that body did not bear any uh, sinful things anymore that body was now new or glorified body but if there were no marks of sin in that body we could see the traces in his hand the nails and the spears but there was no sin in his body that body was made new no broken bone no joints out of order new body glorified body which was a proof that sin was put away hallelujah so now that sin was put away jesus became sin for us we were with him on the cross sin was put away because now sin was put away the sin problem was solved and now jesus christ was quickened came back from the dead the bible calls him the firstborn of the dead hallelujah so now he was the first to be born again to be quickened Glory be to God. When you read the book of Ephesians chapter 2, say we were quickened together with him and we were raised. So with the spiritual life were given together. So his spirit was quickened to life. It was given a brand new body. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So now this man, Jesus, as the first man was given a command, now the second man God made. God now also gave commandments to multiply, to be fruitful. To replenish the earth to subdue the earth and to have dominion but the second man jesus christ the second adam he had authority on this earth and in the heavens his authority his domain was beyond the domain of adam now the kingdom of, of heaven was given unto him you get it now he, he is king over the head in heaven and is king on the earth his name has been exalted far above any other, other name. So now this man called Jesus, this king who has the life of God in him, now who died for humanity, God told him, be fruitful and multiply. Glory be to God. So now he has to multiply himself. How is he going to multiply himself? How is he going to do that? How is it possible? Hallelujah. Is it with a woman? Definitely not. How is he going to do that? As a mystery that has been revealed by the Spirit of God. I hope you're going to enjoy in the next series. You're now going to see very soon who are the children of Jesus Christ. Who are the offspring of Jesus. Who is the family of Jesus. Who are the descendants of Jesus Christ. His children. The perfect children, the superman on this earth. You will see these children very soon. You will get to know who they are. And you can become one of his children. Glory be to his name forevermore. So until we see each other next time, you are very blessed. You are very blessed. You are very blessed. Because God chose you, your ears to hear these mysteries. That the Spirit of God is revealing in this hour and the end times that we are in father we thank you for your word thank you for blessing us so mightily with such a revelation thank you for revealing unto us the mysteries of the kingdom these mysteries that were hidden from the beginning thus life that was hidden that many have not yet understood thank you for revealing these things unto us for giving us understanding for giving us revelation knowledge by the spirit of wisdom and the spirit of understanding Thank you for the spirit of knowledge, the spirit of revelation that is teaching us today. Thank you, Father, you've done it again. All glory, honor, wisdom, understanding, revelation, all wisdom belongs to you. Thank you, precious Holy Spirit, for teaching us as you usually do. Thank you for helping us. Thank you for touching their hearts and their minds. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. I was very blessed. I hope you're blessed. There is much more for you. Deep, deep things of the kingdom of the Lord is revealing in this hour. I mean, I did not do anything for God to show me these things, but it was God separated me from the womb of my mother. 
to do this work as he separated Paul from the womb of his mother. God separated me and gave, put his life in me, put his spirit in me to do this task by his grace, by his grace. So you are very blessed. Expect to hear more. Until we see each other next time, Jesus loves you so much and I love you too. Goodbye. Greetings to you all my friends all over the globe that are watching me today This is indeed a wonderful day a great day a joyful day a peaceful day I Welcome you all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to Resurrection Life Ministries International in part in the life of God all over the globe by the Holy Spirit. You're welcome this is your your channel for good news this is the place where you enjoy abundance of life. This is the place where you will be successful, prosperous, where the Holy Spirit teaches you. Uh, the, the riches in Christ teaches you how to be glorious, how to be successful, how to be, how to be joyful, how to walk in peace, how to be wise, how to be prosperous in your business, in everything that you do, how to have peace in your marriage, in your family. This is the place for that because the Holy Spirit is here to teach about the mysteries of Christ in you, the hope of glory. It Thank you, Lord. So as we studied last time, that Adam, the first man God made was called Adam. And this man, the Bible says God made that man in his own image according to his likeness and he formed the body of man from the dust of the ground and after forming that body he then breathed into his nostrils the breath of life or the spirit of life he then put his life into that body he then took his life and placed that life in that body are you getting the image it was a life of God and God took that life, He placed that life in the body. And now that life was now outside of God. That, that life now has its own personality. That life now can make choices. The life now can, can choose to disobey God or obey God. This life can now, this person, right, that is called Adam, has a soul. Bible says he became a living soul. So God placed his life in Adam and it says he became a living soul. So now he, he could make choices, he could decide. You understand? So now that life had to now flow through the soul, through the body to come in a physical world. So now the soul had to now make a conscious decision whether it will allow that life inside of him to flow out whether it would allow the peace to flow, the joy to flow, whether it would allow the wisdom to flow, whether it would allow the, the, the kindness, the self-control of God to flow out, or is going to do its own thing. Do you understand? It can choose to allow the fullness of God's life to flow, or block it just by making a decision, just by deciding, I do not want to walk in peace. I don't want to walk in joy. I don't want to obey God. I want to do this. I want to eat this fruit. I want to do that. Do you get it? For this man, God made him perfect. But yet God gave him his own choice, his own will. The life of God came out, and the life of God is here to reveal the life that we have in Christ Jesus. So buckle your seat belt. We're going to get into another journey with the Spirit of God into what we started last time. Last time we spoke about the offspring of Christ or the generation of Christ. You understand? The children of Christ. We, we spoke about it and then a brother made verses and we went through and we, 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 we saw that Jesus Christ was born of God. 
And then after we also went to Genesis. In the beginning we saw that Adam was also born of God. Alright. So anyways, before I, I, I go into it further, let us just share a quick word of prayer and thanksgiving to our Father to prepare your heart to receive the word that God has for you. No, no matter what religion you, you belong to, just stay tuned. God has something wonderful for you. Even if you're atheist, open your heart and mind and listen to what, what is coming forth. And the spirit of truth will confirm and convict your heart. Of, uh, of, of, of the truth that is coming forth. Uh, dear Father, I thank you for this, this opportunity and privilege to minister the good news of your kingdom to, to, to souls all over the globe. I thank you, Daddy, for, for giving me the understanding. Thank you, Daddy, for giving me the wisdom to communicate this truth, this gospel to every soul that is listening that they might understand. Thank you, Father, that your Holy Spirit is imparting life unto them, is releasing joy, love, understanding, wisdom, prosperity, is releasing kindness, righteousness, teaching them how to walk into it, even as they're hearing the word of truth, even as they're hearing the words of life. Thank you, Daddy. It is done, Holy Spirit. I thank you. Thank you for what you're doing. I thank you for the angels that have been released, that have gone forth, that are in the homes of people. Yes, they are there in your homes. I can see them. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. It is done. I love you, precious Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for making me what I am today by your grace. I love you and I worship you. Thank you, Jesus, for giving your life and loving us all. Thank you. Amen.